continuing on the topic of analysis of variance, but it's addressing the question, which mean is different? So by this, I mean to suggest you have already performed analysis of variance and calculated a p-value for the hypothesis test. So let's just write that down so we have it in front of us. Step one, calculate p-value and reject HO. If you have calculated the p-value and rejected HO, then and only then can you ask which mean is different from the rest. So when you reject HO, when you reject the null hypothesis and analysis of variance, you're essentially saying at least one of the means is different from the rest. But analysis of variance by itself doesn't tell you which mean specifically is suggested to be different from the rest. So what we're going to try to do in this video is help you address the question, which of the means is different? But this is a follow-up step to calculating a p-value and rejecting HO. Only if you have rejected HO can you ask which mean is different. If you have failed to reject HO, then you have evidence that the means are not different. So it is inappropriate to ask which mean is different. Okay, that's my first cautionary tale here in this world of which mean is different. My second cautionary tale is do not use t.test to calculate hypothesis tests for each pairwise comparison of the k levels of some factor, some categorical variable. OK, it is all too common in the world of applied statistics to see students, practitioners, researchers say, I don't like analysis of variance because it doesn't tell me which mean is different. So instead, I'm going to do something clever. I'm going to break up all the k levels of my categorical explanatory variable into two groups. Like if I had mu1, mu2, mu3, and mu4, the idea is Compare mu1 to mu2, and in a different t-test, compare mu1 to mu3, and in a different t-test, compare mu1 to mu4. I urge you strongly, do not do this rather clever but inappropriate idea. It is the wrong way to evaluate which mean is different from the rest. I'm going to try to explain to you a little bit why this is the wrong way to do this. There is an issue in the world of statistics named family-wise error rates. And you essentially incur an increased error rate by performing multiple two-sample t-tests. If you compare mu1 to mu2, mu1 to mu3, mu1 to mu4, and keep it going, mu2 to mu3, mu2 to mu4, mu3 to mu4. If you do all pairwise comparisons in order to determine which mean is different, you are increasing your family-wise error rate. OK, let me see if I can give you an analogy as to why you're increasing your family-wise error rate. If I give you a biased coin of, say, probability of flipping heads of 0.05. Now, I chose 0.05 because that's exactly the level of significance common to hypothesis testing. 
So if I give you a biased coin with a very low probability of observing heads, and you just keep flipping the coin, will you eventually see heads? Yes. If you just keep flipping the coin, even though it's a low probability of observing heads on any one flip, you will observe at least one heads eventually. That is essentially the same idea going along with doing all pairwise comparisons. Even if there's a low probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, say a probability of 0.05, but you do all pairwise comparisons, you will eventually find significance. But that doesn't mean that you have found something truly different. That just means you've played the odds and you've flipped your unlikely coin many times. That is a wrong way to proceed. The proper way to proceed, at least one of the proper ways to proceed, but it's particularly easy to do in the world of R, is named Tukey's Honest, see it's honest, everybody likes that, Significant Difference. And essentially, all this method does is adjusts the p-values with some clever mathematics and statistical thinking for you. So in R, I'm just going to keep the same example going that I've been looking at for the entire series of analysis of variance videos, because it's really not that much code to get us through all of it. So after you have fit your model, and calculated analysis of variance from which you identified your p-value so low, you reject HO. After you have done that, you can ask R to calculate Tukey's honest significant difference by calling Tukey HSD on AOV of fit. Please do pay attention to all the crazy parentheses going on here. Tukey HSD is a function being called on AOV, which itself is called on the variable you have saved named fit. And the output you get from Tukey's honest significant difference is essentially all the pairwise comparisons for you. So look, this is Canada to a Lourdes. Felidae to Eluridae, Hyenidae to Eluridae. Notice what it's doing. It's doing Eluridae to each of them, all the way down. And then it just moves on to the next one, Canidae to Felidae, Canidae to Hyenidae. It's calculating the difference of the means for each of the groups it lists. Then it calculates for you lower and upper confidence intervals. And then it calculates for you an adjusted p-value. Because the p-values are adjusted to take into account this family-wise error rate issue, you can essentially just scroll your eyes down this list and figure out which of these pairwise comparisons has evidence of difference. For instance, where did it just go? This one right here. Based on the data, there appears to be evidence that the difference between Mustelidae, that's this one, and Phalidae, that's this one, are different with a p-value of 0 0.006, which is certainly less than a level of significance of 0 0.05. Now, that's essentially saying that Mustelidae appears to be different than Phalidae. Notice the population distributions overlap fairly well, but the sampling distributions do not overlap much at all because there's so much certainty in the estimates of the means, which analysis of variance is inherently testing. We have evidence to say that the mean of Phalidae appears to be different than the mean of Mustelidae. You should do a similar comparison between Procyonidae, 
and Felidae, or if we can find it ourselves. Procyonidae. Oh, we're going to have to do, here it is. Oh, that's just the next one down. Because Felidae's sampling distribution and the sampling distribution for Procyonidae are really quite inseparable based on their overlap, we cannot say that Procyonidae and Felidae are distinct in terms of their mean brain to body weight ratio. But notice how much of this distinction comes down to the sampling distribution, not the population distribution. Ah, so this is indeed a very advanced plot we see that helps us understand why Tukey's honest significant difference will help us identify which of the means are different. The key here, though, is to remember you can only ask Tukey to help you evaluate the honest significant difference when you have successfully rejected the null hypothesis. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis, you should not do this test. 